Hello and welcome everyone to the Bard's Tale 4, the Director's Cut. I am so pumped to be starting this brand new series. This is episode 1 and we are going to be starting a fun little game. This is a lovely little puzzle game and definitely one of my favorite games. Mentioned that once or twice around the channel. I'm so glad you guys can be here for it. Uh, so I'm going to be going ahead, playing on Legendary Difficulty. I'm going to be doing a All Bards Challenge, where every single one of my people can be Bard. So we're going to be missing out on like quite a few key abilities. So uh, like we'll still be able to showcase them a little bit, because there are some people that are like vital to the story for a first bit, first while, and we'll have a chance to play with them, play with some of their abilities. So I'll be showcasing a little bit of of the other things, and I usually every single time I go into a Bard's Tale game, I always have a, a core like underlining strategy going in. So sometimes I like. Essentially, I'll pick one feature of the game that I really want to focus on, and I'll go with that. So, uh, currently, well, I, currently I'm playing a game with Ella, and what we chose was to go a a bleed build where um, everyone was bleeding, and then uh, and the bleed caused them to take more dam or take damage, true damage, every single time uh, they move. So then you pair it with movement abilities, and you're able to get a lot of damage. So there are some of those combinations that are really strong. And what I wanted to do here was, being named the Bard's Tale, I wanted wanted to go ahead and call it... Uh, and I'll, I'll start up a new game here. Uh, I wanted to call it The Bard's Tale, or A Bard's Tale. Of course, the Bard being plural. So, what we're going to be doing is trying to showcase, uh, there's four main paths of, uh, there's four main paths that bards can go with, and you can mix and match them in various different ways. So, I'm going to go ahead, try, show, show off a little bit of, uh, a few different play styles that bards can go with. Of course, we're going to be going with the Dead Man's Tale. So, we're going with a combat difficulty legendary. We're not going to be changing any of this stuff. Although, if you wanted to make it harder, um, you could turn off auto resurrect, meaning that if someone falls in your party, uh, they will no longer be brought back up until you get to a save location. Uh, permadeath is just if you're wiped, you're wiped. There goes the save. You got uh, and. Uh, you can't go back on it, which is not very great, uh, not a very great idea for YouTube, uh, if you're wanting to have at least a long series, because <laughs> if you just get unlucky, then, well, sucks to be you at that point. <laughs> Uh, so we're not going to be doing that. Um, Auto Resurrect I will keep on because it does say that this is the intended way to play Bard's Tale for Barrow's Deep. Which Barrow's Deep is what it's called. Director's Cut was a... well, it was essentially an updated game that fixed a bunch of things and they had to re-release it. So let's go ahead and we're going to do the exploration style as designed. That's all that I've actually done. I've never actually tried the 80s style. But this is kind of an 80s style uh, RPG, uh, from what I've heard. I've never played any 80s style RPGs that way, or at least I don't think I have. Anyways, there is also the option, if you really want it, to go with the skippable puzzles. It'll give you a special song that you can sing that will uh, skip a puzzle for you if, uh, if you need to get through and you're really stuck. Uh, some of these, or a lot of these settings, are changeable in the settings throughout the game if you really need to. But we're just going to go as designed and play some classic Bard's Tale. And of course, uh, even though we're naming the series, er, naming the episodes series a little bit different, this is going to be the Bard's Tale. 
in summer. Let us begin, everyone. Enjoy. The song I sing will tell the tale of a cold and wintry day, of castle walls and torch-lit halls, and a price men had to pay. When evil fled and brave men bled, the Dark One came to stay. Tell men of old for blood and gold had rescued Scarabray. All right, thank you for the lovely intro, Bard. This is the Bard's Tale. Lots of music, lots of incredible, incredible lines, and yeah, uh, singing and instruments. Here we are. Do you feel pity, friends, when you look upon these wretches? Well, wash it from your hearts, for these are the villains who seek to turn Scarabray into a pit of depravity. Elves, dwarves, trow, and practitioners of the dark arts. Enemies all, whose wicked lives must end if our city is to live in peace again. Us, children, all right. shall the sword father smite all who befriend so the old races. So this person is named Bish Bishop Henrid. Um, he's not he very nice, and, and he's manipulating people, and he, he just killed a bunch of adventurers and, and elves and them. dwarves he and trow. The of the bards yeah. Who so, them. The oh, and Bard didn't like bards either. Apparently, I thought everyone liked bards, but not in the bard's tale. Who are sacrificing us to their dark All right, and uh, going to go ahead and. Uh, for now, I'm going to go ahead and turn... Okay, talk, uh, tutorials are on. Uh, just for those who aren't familiar with the game and don't know much uh, about the game, I figured I'd leave that on for you, and uh, you'd be able to learn along with us here. All right. Oh, that's a Hello, Rebby. And no mistake. I... I don't understand. What did they do? What was their crime? And we are currently playing as Melody, so uh, that is our current character. Their crime? Existing was their crime. The Fatherites don't like our kind. Come on, before those paladins give us a second glance. I'll give them a second glance. And maybe a... Oh, here now. Save it. You'll only get yourself killed. And we need you. You're gonna save Scarabray. Yep, it's all up to us. <laughs> ah, you're looking at me like you think old Robbie's had a few too many. Well, he is a bar. He does like to drink. <laughs> but this is no drunkard's fancy. You've been in my dreams seven nights now, and each one with the same end. You the hero? And me lost. They all start with some evil slithering out of the darkness. And you driving it back from whence it came. But I don't make it to the happy ever after. And there's a moment right at the end where you could save me. And instead you choose not to. You just turn away and leave me to be buried alive. Well, maybe that means I shouldn't trust you. But you're the best hope we've got. So I guess I'll just have to pray that part's not true. We'll try to do our best to save you there, Rabbi. Anyway, if we can. Hero, let's I hope get we back can. to the Adventurers Guild. I have a few words to say to the congregation. All right, Adventurers Guild, here we come. This way. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Ravi, the leader of the Adventurers Guild, has temporarily joined your party. He can attack with his axe and shillelagh, and hand out health potions. 
And this is Melody. This is Melody the Bard. She's our very first adventure. Uh, she can attack with a hatchet, gain powers by drinking, and play Sanctuary Score to shield her allies. Let's see. You can bring out the party bar by right-clicking. And there we are. So here's Melody. And so there's an active character and an inactive mm -hmm. character icon. So we've got Chop and Head Knocker, and do? we've got Chop and Sanctuary Score. Both of them have the Chug abilities. And we can even see right here. Ah, hello. That, um, this is by pressing Tab. It might be I by default. I'm unsure about that. So, welcome to your skill tree. Each time you level up... Uh, I should have done this earlier, but this is fine. So each time you level up, you'll earn a skill point, which can be spent to unlock a new skill. Uh, there are uh, four different skill trees. Uh, you'll find, yeah, attack, or er, um, defense, utility, music, brewing for the for the bards. And yeah, this is a bit of an old image, but uh, it's very similar. So it's broken into three tiers. So, to unlock the second tier, you need to spend 8 skill points, and the third, total of 16. Uh, the first time you unlock a tier, you'll have to travel to the Adventurer's Guild to be judged worthy of advancement by the review board. So essentially, that's how they lock you out of getting the endgame abilities and the, and the capstones um, until later into the game. So, the, the soonest you can get a capstone is somewhere around level 16 or level 17. Um, although if you're a certain race, you can get them a little bit sooner. Just a little bit sooner. And yeah, you'll have to travel back to the Adventurer's Guild in order to, uh, get judged and make sure that you're able to, uh, carry on. Uh, okay, that said 3 of 4. So, Melody starts out with plus 1 maximum spell point. A, the chop, uh, well, everyone starts with hot cross buns which gives um, Sanctuary score and basic stats, basic combat for a chop ability, and some defense. So we've got uh, padded, ba padded Betish Garb, Leather Armor, and we've got Constitution here. So those are the three perks that are the three things that we get at first. Spell Point, Upgraded Armor, and Constitution, which of course we're able to change later. And then, of course, you see Rabbi. He has strength, bludgeon, and critical hit with bludgeons. So, he actually has a chance to stun. And you can see he's actually, uh... He's actually five levels above us. Or, no, two levels above us. He's level five. So, first thing you want to do when you enter uh, the Bard's Tale... can't swing a cat in Scarabray these days without hitting a paladin. Not that I'm prone to swinging cats. Okay, I'll pause that first. That thought. Every single line, every bit of, um, every bit of character dialogue is 100% voiced in this game, and I love it. You get a lot of games where it's like, well, character voices—they're expensive, and they went all out for this game. I appreciate that. And then you got lots of singing, like she's singing a nice song for us. And of course, this is a Celtic game, so you'll find a lot of Celtic music in here. What a load of shite. Always a few who'll take advantage of hard times. So, what you want to go looking around... So, yes, the first thing you do when you enter the game is you go around and you... Uh, gather everything you can, um, and I'll show you why in a moment. No entry. So that's this blocked off. I this is blocked set. off because someone's here set up where they're not care. supposed to be. You're blocking the public way. <laughs> You'll have to move. Uh, you'll find these as well around. Red colwort, used for making health potions. And green elk grass. A variety of herbs can be used for cooking or uh, to making making health restore restorative foods out of combat. 
and a variety of other things. I should. There's nothing to begin fighting the Fatherites head on. There's another way. At least, I hope there is. The temple will Poor girl got burned on the stake. And Report she looks very charmed. All witches. Report all heroes. Respect to you. I apologize for the things that you had to deal with. So we got some metal scraps and we got some wood, which is absolutely perfect. Because uh, sometimes you can get unlucky. Um, in the first few th few boxes, you want to get um, wood and metal scraps. It's going to be very important. Uh, well, not hugely important, but still very valuable. So we can actually go over here. And you see, and you can see this on the map too, is there's a bunch of these icons. So this is a grappling hook. And it needs a, a grappling hook. And that is something that is craftable. You can see um, in the crafting here, when you press tab or I for inventory, uh, crafting, you've got grappling hooks here. You need fiber and metal scraps. So you need to get the metal scraps in order to make the grappling hook. And fiber is craftable just with a little bit of wood. So we'll go ahead and make some of those, or make one of those. There we go. We've got two grappling hooks. And now we can go here. So as this is a puzzle game, we're not allowed to jump. I can press the space bar. I don't jump. Oh, oh wow, that's really nice. We got two great starting weapons. We got a long axe. And we got a dirk here. So these are usable by different classes. Dirk is by practitioner and rogue, where long axe is bard and fighter. So we can actually go ahead and uh, we can equip that right now because that's going to give us plus one armor class, plus two intelligence, and plus four to strength. So our strength goes from five all the way up to eight. So pretty good. And we start out with the musical bones as well. All right. So uh, we also got some health potions. And if we find a practitioner or rogue, they might be able to use this Dirk. Uh, this is a, um, what's it called again? Elven Shrine. So these Elven Shrines, um, little debriefing first. There are certain weapons in the game that are puzzles in and of themselves. So you'll find puzzles ever in this game. So if you're not going to like the puzzles, okay, it's not your, it's not your type of game. I love puzzles myself. And that's why I can never understand someone's like, oh, well, the puzzles. They're so annoying, but honestly, I love them. It, I love thinking. Okay, so each of these elven shrines have it has a little riddle, so we can go ahead, remember and remember this riddle: guiding light above the waves, saving men from water and graves. So if we ever find a puzzle weapon, uh, an elven weapon that has that um, has that phrase, we can actually just go here. And upgrade it um, to its final level. What once you get up to it, um, there's there's usually three tiers to elven weapons. There's a first tier, which takes a basic puzzle. A second tier, slightly harder puzzle. And then you get to a third tier, and that third tier is usually by um, some sort of riddle. So sometimes you have to go to a location and play a little song. Sometimes you have to um, match the riddle with the song. And sometimes you uh, sometimes you match the riddle with um, like sometimes it's a kill quest where you have to kill a certain enemy. Come here for soup, have you? Well, soup is this guy's not an great. adequate description for what you'll be getting. You'll be getting fulfillment, joy, the tender embrace of your mother's arms. This is not just soup. I, it I is sure a hope these actors are paid enough. A liquid epiphany, heaven by the spoonful. There is no question that this soup is good enough for you. The question you have to ask yourself is: Am I good enough for this soup? Hmm. <laughs> uh, no. On, On consideration, consideration, you, you are, are not, not good, good enough, enough for this soup. soup. 
Well, thank you. Ruffians. Hopefully, hopefully that'll change once I save the entire world. So, I've definitely played the starter bit of this game enough. Very nice again. Continue. I've definitely played, like, the start of the game quite a bit, so... Uh, I do know where some of the stuff is. Or a lot of the stuff is. Um, I'm going to be trying, or trying to be as informative as I can, and for someone who plays the game casually and may not know some things, or doesn't know the game at all... Oh, hello. Boots. Um, I, I hope that you'll definitely take some out of uh, something out of this, or even just getting a feel for my playstyle. Here we are. The guild. Already. There. And they also have another Elven Shrine. Turn of a page, word of a sage, sight of a fall, start of it all. All right. Into the Adventurers Guild. Here we are. More folk killed last night. Some great beast, they said. And again, they blame us for it. What I just saw at Henrod's Hanging Tree was the last straw. We have to... D do you hear that? The Song of the Maiden. What does it foretell this time? Uh -oh. those, those paladins again. They're a little bit overzealous, I think. This way, hero! Thanks, Rabbi. Glad to hear you got my back. So, now, this is the option where we get to do one of two things. Keep Melody as she is right now, or create a character. Uh, you'll notice that there are a lot of achievements in uh, in the game for, uh, like, creating a specific character. So, like, there's one achievement of each, uh, of each class, like, create a bard, create a practitioner, create a fighter, create a rogue. There are four classes in the game. And then there's another um, achievement for keeping Melody. I do want to keep Melody, but I'm going to start character creation, make a few changes, and then, um, and you'll you'll see what I'll do here. So, these are the four archetypes. We've got Bard, Practitioner, Fighter, and Rogue. So Bards use spell points to tell stories so grand they carry mystic properties along with them imbuing the listener with the essence of the song. Bards provide powerful buffs and debuffs to your party, though they um, can be serviceable combatant in a pinch. Bards gain the, their power through good humor and a wet whistle, meaning they gain spell points and bonuses from drinking on the job. So you've got three starting abilities, Chop, Chug, and Sanctuary Score, and these are the starting stats. All right, we're going to make lots of bards today. Well, lots of bards throughout the whole adventure here. So there are seven different cultures. You've got four different cultures of human. So you've got Bade. Um, Bade is the local people. Um, they're most of the civilized people. They're well learned, and this is what I was saying where some characters gain a little bit of e extra uh, bonus skill points. So the Badish studies uh, gives you three extra skill points, one at level 3, one at level 10, and one at level 18. So, if you need to uh, get a lot on a single character, this is the way to do it. As for the Einar, they have a legendary ability to hold a grudge. Each time they're struck in combat, they gain plus one strength. Uh, actually, it's plus two strength. That's a typo there. Every time you get plus two for the remainder of the fight. It is possible I am wrong on that, and it actually scales based off of some sort of strength, but I'm not thinking so. Anyways, uh, we got Ficti here. They are protective of their friends and family. Once per battle, a Ficti will absorb damage from an ally that would otherwise kill them. I don't know how this works when you have multiples. I have a feeling that when someone tr starts to go down, both of the Ficti, if there are two, there are two Ficti adjacent to someone, uh, I think they will both take the damage for the person. So, don't quote me on it, but just keep that in mind. Outlanders are immune to poison, fire, and bleeding. There are dwarves 
who are immune to stun, root, okay, s specifically they cannot be stunned, rooted, or forcibly moved, um, yes, uh, also the elves have plus 30% intelligence and plus one maximum spell points, and we have uh, the trow, so the trow, if they get a killing blow, Get, will gain, will regain, or gain, one opportunity point uh, for the entire party. Uh, happens once per turn. An opportunity is essentially your action points and how many actions you have in a turn. And that that starts at three this and it goes up throughout the fight. Way. Oh. Let's go with a Einar. Um, so she you is going to be... No uh, see, we can, do, we can select the portrait and that'll change the person that we can choose. We so we'll right go with, the, uh, with Melody how she usually is. And for the starting abilities, um, her core ability is going to be the War Chanter. So the idea is I'm going to give every single bard one thing to focus on. Um, and by focus, I mean either stance. You can see the keyword stance there. And you can also see the keywords channel here. So um, essentially it's a ability that either um, happens immediately and lasts until either a set time limit or um, indefinitely until your focus is broken or um, it's a channel which um, is something that happens at the end of the amount of channel time. So a channel 1 in this case you activate it now and then on the beginning of the following turn it activates. Um, so you have a focus that is based on intelligence, and if you want to keep focusing on things, the more intelligence, um, the more intelligence you have, uh, the better you'll do so. And more on that later. So we'll go with the War Chanter. Uh, one thing... Oh, okay. So we'll go with the War Chanter, and the other things that we're going to go, um, this plus two strength, as we saw with that axe earlier, this is going to be much, or this is definitely going to be worth it. Uh, it'll give that extra bonus early damage. As for an ability, that's a good question. We could go with light armor, we could go with medium, or with the chainmail armor. I think the best option is going to be uh, light armor right off the bat. So that way we'll be able to, after light armor, our next level up we can grab chainmail armor, we can head to the shop, we can buy some good armor, and that'll help us stay alive in the early game. And uh, it might give us some bonuses to strength as well. So we're going to go with our light armor. We're going to go here. So we started with a weathered leather helm. And... Um... We are supposed to have our um, our axe equipped, but uh, I, for I forgot that your inventory switches over between... Um... Okay. If you have anything equipped, it, it, unequip it before you go into character creation, uh, because character creation will overwrite what you have equipped. So go ahead, take it off. You'll get new stuff when you enter character creation. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna swap it out, and then we'll uh, then we'll start up the game again here. All right. So for some reason, uh, I opened up my inventory, my character sheet, and uh, it's giving me tutorial stuff. I accidentally skipped past the first one, but essentially, this is your inventory. This is where you'll find all of your items. You also have multiple pages that you can store items on, listed here. So you've got a total of five pages. And each one takes up a specific um, size in your storage. Um, you also have uh, different uh, filters here. Okay, you can see lore items or, or quest items by clicking on the associated button. So, lore items, things like books and such you'll find. Quest items that are important um, either now or later. And inventory is just all of this. Filter is a lovely little option that they added in the director's cut that uh, allows you to find things more easily if you if you don't exactly have the uh, cleanest, more most organized inventory. 
Um, on the left, this is your character sheet. You've got all of your stats listed here. You've got any passives you have. Uh, for example, um, uh, beta studies you get is a passive, which is level 3, level 10, level 18, you get a bonus skill. So this is also all of your equipment you'll find here. And these are your masteries. So these are the abilities that you currently... Uh, that Okay, mastered abilities are abilities you have permanently committed to memory. So you gain them through your skill tree, mostly. And also, your, your mastery book here allows you to swap out which skills you can have at any given time. So you always have six skills active at any time. Well, at least up to six skills. You have um, four abilities of your choice, and that can be any abilities that you learn in your skills. And then you could also, then you also have your trinket, which can give you a bonus ability. Like it could be a health potion. So that ability might be using a health potion. Um, or it can give you a, like, the, the chug ability with, with, um, bards is you drink some alcohol, you get some, uh, you get bonus, uh, <clears throat> you, you get bonus spell points and drunk stacks and more on that later. Uh, the fifth, or the sixth ability you get is movement. So it costs one opportunity point to move. And so those are the six abilities that you have that you can have during your turn. Uh, you can change which one you're selecting by either clicking on them here, or there's arrows over here on either side. And then there's crafting. And you can craft all sorts of things that we saw earlier. So these are the crafting components. You've got food that, you, that can um, heal the entire party. Health potions. Um, here's your alcohol. Adventuring tools like grappling hooks, torches, and such. Lots of good options here. So, yes, what I was going to do there was just to uh, unequip these things. Uh, you can keep that on, because I think we are going to get one anyways. But uh, And we'll take that off as well, because those are items that we can use. <laughs> Possibly. Okay, so now we'll just go into it like normal. So as you can see here, I went with the same skills. Uh, I've got, uh, yeah, so everything is the same except uh, this time. Uh, the stuff that we had in our inventory is not going to be lost. So we start out with this leathered, hel leathered helm. We'll get more stuff later. Uh, especially since we went with the leather armor skill. Uh, we'll be able to, um, well, we can equip this, but we'll be able to equip some early leather, er, er, early armor as well. Armor is going to help a lot. So here we go. Let's see. What do we have? Ah, you have a character that can use spell points. While in combat, magic spells and bardic songs cost spell points in to activate instead of opportunity points. Spell points can be generated in combat by using abilities like Chug or Meditate. Practitioners also passively generate spell points each turn. Spell points are easy to spot because of the spell point icons on them. So, below every ability, um, or below s spells, sorry, um, you'll see the amount of spell points that it costs. And if you don't have enough, it'll be grayed out. Uh, this is the spell point bar, and these are the abilities that can actually regain them. And, um, uh, opportunity point cost is a little bit different. You have to hover hover over them, and you'll find them that way. So here we go. So we can now equip our long axe. And we don't have any shoes. We should get some shoes. These are conjurer's boots. Uh, only mage practitioners can use those if you have the right skill for it. It's like light armor, but for mages, kind of. That's a bad way to put it, but still. And we get our musical bones. So, we'll have 11 constitution to start, as well as one armor class, and uh, this long axe will give us plus two intelligence. Hi. So, we've got a better starting out, or start, we've got a better start now. 
And here we are. You made it. Lots of fire out here. Right Come down on. Here. We've got to get to the old guild and figure a way to. Uh, so us. armor class. I've been talking about or mentioning that a couple times. Armor class is. It's a value that will uh, essentially subtract damage directly from. Or, uh, subtract physical damage. The adventurer's guild from back before the old town was buried is still here after all these years. I'll explain that. Just a little filthier and liable to collapse. At least it's well hidden. No danger of another visit from the Fatherites. So, oh, yeah. We're looking for a green door. Mushroom. So your armor, if you have one armor, like we do here, that means we will take one less damage from all instances of physical damage. That armor can be removed, and it can be bypassed through things like uh, mental damage, which is a different type, and true damage, which bypasses all damage types. Um, but uh, the more armor you have, the less damage you'll take for every single hit. Hold on, hero. You'd better touch that lock stone. Yes, we will lock in a moment. I forgot to mention something as well, and I don't even think I grabbed it. It's always good to give him a rub, particularly before a fight. Uh, make they sure can to give you a second chance if things go wrong. Yes, they can. Okay. Uh, these magical lanterns here. Uh, there are four of them within Scarabray below, which is where we are now. Uh, if you find them all, uh, you can get a fun little bonus. There. Now you're safe. And of no course, what befalls, these are your save points. Come right back to here. So these, this specific kind um, is a permanent save. So you can save here as many times as you want. You can go back. Um, all sorts of things. We'll deal with these markings on the wall later. Uh, this is a little push block. And you can only push it from the side that you're on. Uh... We have another spot to grapple, but we can't get up there yet. That's part of the quest later. I'm not going to spend the grappling hook on it now. Uh, keep an eye out for celestial offerings. So, uh, this is something that you'll have to... Uh, you'll have to look at, yes, the... Uh, okay. Uh, they're not required for your adventure, but... Uh, you can find either in your game files or online a Bard's Tale code wheel. And essentially, you match what's on the offering to what's on the code wheel. And you get two numbers. And those numbers, which you look up in a book that we'll get once we reach the other Adventures Guild. Um, you look them up, it'll give you two items. You place those items in the offering, and then you complete it. Uh, and then you get your reward. So I'll show you how to do that once we get to that point. Are they adventurers? Did they escape the fire? Uh, look out! An enemy. Charge enemies before they spot you to get a first strike. If they spot you first, get the first. They'll get the first turn. This is hugely important. There. Uh, it is essential that you get a first strike because the difference between you getting first strike in combat and you being spotted can be night and day. They can one shot half of your party before you get a chance to move and put up your defenses or you can one shot them and put up your defenses before they have a chance to attack you. It's it's a huge huge thing. Make sure to get the, the drop on the enemies. Don't think these are any friends of ours. No. These ones, they don't pay attention. Uh, so you, fortunately, you can walk through. Alright. Combat in the Bard's Tale is turn-based. You have three opportunity points to spend each turn. This number will increase as you progress. The only way to recover opportunity is uh, after it is spent is to end your turn. That's not exactly true. There are different things that can increase your opportunity, but those are special skills and specific beats general. So... Uh, first thing to do, usually, with a, uh, with a bard is to, uh, chug and get spell points. As you can see, we cannot use the Sanctuary Score or the Kale's Rudiment abilities. However, yeah. we're just going to go ahead and, uh, finish them off now. Let's see. Uh, they can't do a whole lot of damage. 
So head knocker, one opportunity point for seven mental damage. At your command. And then your let's go with this guy. And then this guy. And then he'll get a chance to attack us. We press enter. We regain our, our opportunity points. He'll attack us for th uh, two damage instead of three because of our armor. There we go. One of the five core attributes in the Bard's Tale. Each point, of, each point of armor reduces the amount of physical damage taken. Mental and true damage ignore armor completely. There we go. So with the Einar ability, we just gained two bonus strength just from being attacked and taking physical damage. So instead of doing five damage, we now do six damage. And that will also apply to our our other ability, the Kael's Rudiment. We'll take that, thank you, and a Dragon Bile Bomb. And this will take a bunch of gold. If you go over here, you'll find a chest here. And hey, we got some leather armor. Which means uh, we've got an upgrade. There we go. And it looks much nicer, too. Doesn't look as shaggy. Look at that. Very nice. Okay, so. Uh, don't go this way, guys. Uh, if you fight Palins in the early game, you... Yeah, you will die. Watch out. Those enemies will wipe the floor with you. So best steer clear. If you look at an enemy group from a not moderate distance away, you will detect how strong they are compared to you. Green is easy. Yellow is even, orange is challenging, red are impossible. Uh, I'm playing a leg legendary difficulty, so by the time we get to mid to late game, almost all things are either going to be challenging or impossible, and you we'll just have to fight them anyways. Impossible doesn't really mean impossible, but it does mean more challenging. So if you have a great strategy, sometimes you can overcome that, but watch your eyes. Uh, Dragon Bio Bomb breaks barriers. Turn around, mister. I gotta ambush you. Charge! Alright, so there's more of them here. Here. Ah, yes. Combat placed on a 4x4 grid. With your party standing on one side, the enemy standing on the other. Movement in combat is critical. Which adventure er, enemy an adventurer hits depends entirely on where they stand on the battlefield and the targeting pattern, pattern of the ability they're using. Okay, Ready. so... We... Uh, Ready. I think I'm going to go Ready ahead... This is a bigger fight. I'm going to use my Trow Squeezin', my Chug ability. So Chug allows you to select an alcohol. These, this is the only type of alcohol that I have right now. Getting drunk. Each time your bird takes a drink, they get a little drunk. And they're, if their drunken, drunkenness level exceeds their intelligence, they have a brief, brief burst of strength before they pass out and are stunned for one turn. Drink responsibly. So we have five intelligence. So we could get six in, uh, drunk stacks and then we'll be smashed. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and uh, use our ability here. So now, if they strike us with a melee attack, um, it takes six. They take phys six physical damage, and they get set on fire. All right, and this guy one. is going to take a step over here and kill this guy. You to serve. And. I'll hit this guy too. So fortunately with this one, um, it only matters who's on the left and right of you. Thank you, yes, I know how to print the, uh, press the intern button. Uh, so, Kale's Rudiment, um, any enemy who strikes you or the protected allies at your side. So when you first cast the ability, the person on the right and left will be, ac will have the, will be activated here. So, they each take take Stand damage, aside. and they have the, a stack of on fire by hitting me. And that fire will do three damage per stack um, at this level. Three damage per stack at the end of their turn. Here. 
there. On your so right. now, uh, we can heal here with the uh, with these, or we can heal Ready. out of combat, or we can use the health potion. So there we go. I figured I would let you guys, uh, oh, Let's see you've taken wounds. some damage. Heal up before your next fight by eating food. Uh, yeah, I actually just healed by using a health potion, but yes, um, uh, you can, <clears throat> you can eat food as well. Carrots, you can give plus two, act two, uh, constitution for the entire party. Meat is four, or you can go ahead, you can craft some cooking herbs. Cooking herbs, you can make some steak. If you had other things, you could make soup and broth and bread. Bunch of different options. So we actually got some padded armor boots. So let's go ahead Hi. and equip those. Hey, we're looking like we've got a full set of armor now. And here, we have a rusty arming sword. So this is a sword that will give us, well, like our axe, but it gives us a passive. So certain uh, basic weapons in the game will give you um, addition, like fun bonuses, additional bonuses to your skills. So this one will um, will buff the Storm of Blade skill. Um, so the type of weapon that you actually are wielding does not matter where your uh, where skills are concerned. If we wanted, like, we could grab, like, there are three different types of skills that a, uh, that a bard can go with, which is sword skills, um, axe skills, and, uh, and bludgeon skills, which you can get different crits for, and different, like, the swordsman is on this side, and then axe, and then bludgeon. So, the, the weapon you're wielding doesn't matter for the purpose of counting a, as a crit or a skill. Um, you can you can use an axe with the sword skill. It's totally fine. Uh, but what your what this sword would do was it would would if it would buff Storm of Blades from instead of hitting two times, it hits three times. So that's what that does. Wait a second, why didn't I think of this before? Could you possibly use double arming sword like you can only have one arming sword in your main hand but you can dual wield once you get the right perk for it i was just thinking it says an additional time it doesn't say you can swing three times so perhaps if you wanted to you could even swing four times if you equipped two of these uh this combat watch out for this combat guys they can get the drop on you if you don't Who's hurry there? So if you get around the corner and charge fast enough, you'll get the hit, you'll get the first strike. So just watch out for that. Sometimes I miss it. So these guys, uh, uh, they actually don't do uh, melee damage. So we're not gonna actually get much use out of the Kale's rudiment right now. On your ward. Ready. I'm just gonna move him over here. We're going to use this. I salute you. And oh, we're going Lord. to go ahead and um, we're ha we have spell points that we can use Sanctuary Score for, which is a um, a heal slash shield. Um, so we're just gonna uh, put them in this line here because their attacks can only hit the first enemy. I'll give you a free Ready. Ready uh, for okay. orders. On your ward. At your command. Ready. Okay, so let's get rid of this one. Here. Command me. And yeah, we're, we're, we're fine here. Could have done that a little bit differently, but now this guy just wants to stand here so we can finish him off just like that. There. Pretty simple. Um, it gets harder. Also, the legendary difficulty, what it does is, I'm pretty sure it, it doubles everyone's level. Uh, 
like it'll double double all of the enemies levels so it will get progressively and progressively harder um even more so these guys are level zero so you can't double zero uh this is an ancient luck stone you'll find these all over the wilds and dungeons of keith so this one has the option to save consume or save or consume so you can get XP if you consume them. I will always be consuming them. That is the only thing that I will do. Um, they, every time, it doesn't matter if you save or consume, you'll always get a heal. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll grab this one. I'm tempted to just leave them for when we have a, a better party. Because uh, that way we'll be able to give the XP to the entire party instead of just Melody, who is the only character that we're going to be able to use. You're the danger. So paladins are still hunting us down. Aye, and who keeps hanging innocent folk? More paladins. Can't let them spot us. Edge left I see. and stick to the shadows. The adventurers' guild is just around the corner. Um, All right. One thing I wanted to mention. Well, after what they did. Uh, is I did get the Deluxe Edition for Bard's Tale. So if you have the Deluxe Edition, or even if you have the Base Edition, um, make sure to go ahead and check in your game files. Because um, you'll find a rede redemption code that you can input in the options and in the gameplay section. Go all the way down to the bottom. You can redeem a code here. And with those codes, you'll be able to gain some unique bonuses um, in-game. Uh, so if we can sneak up to this guy, we can grab those boots that is off, that's off that guy. A little risky. Okay, grab them. Back away. We do not want those guys attacking us or we are dead. Please don't come this way. Don't look at us. We are just on our... We'll just be on our way. You didn't hear this barrel just explode in front of you. It's fine. Continue. Duck in here. Grab this chest. A splintered staff. Not using practitioners. Uh, at least not very much. Hello, Freshan. What is so this that? is a... Supposed to be a hard fight here. Although, if you get to know its attack patterns, it's not nearly as bad. So, it's got a lot of health, 67 health, and if you get it to attack you, the chance of it one-shotting you is rather high, so careful. Fortunately, uh, our good friend Rabby here has head knocker, which is going to be very invaluable to us. Ready for orders. So, I'm going to not bother with Kale's rudiment. It's not going to help us here. What it is going to do, however, however is... Um, well, we just have to ignore it. It's not going to It's not going to do anything for us right now. So, we just want to do a little bit of damage to it now. And then... Uh, we're actually going to go... I didn't mean to end turn. That's okay. Uh, so, this is... Uh, this is focus. So, it's tr it's charging an ability, and it will kill us if we don't move. So, uh, so yes, Rabbi's Head Knocker deals mental damage, so we can go ahead and... It's got a cooldown of two turns, so we got to be careful... It's going to try the same thing next turn. But, so we can do this. At your command. And then we can attack it. On and then heart. we can get the heck out of there. Let me just... And because what he's going to do is if... Um, he's going to come and try to do the exact same thing again. And... Oh, I probably shouldn't have gotten out of there then. Ready. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with that next time. Slam. Uh, so, if you break his focus, he'll try to do the exact same thing again. So now we'll have to move out of the way, or we'll all get one shot. 
So you can see, you can actually hover over and actually be able to tell what amount of damage it does by hovering over and it says 20 mental damage to all targets. So yeah, what easy one shot. Ready. So yeah, we have to get out of the way. Problem. I miss. Um, yeah, we can just do that. We can smack him with an ability, and after he successfully casts it, he'll move on to the next ability, um, which is his lunging strike or lunging talon, and you can survive that by using a sanctuary score. Here. Uh, which, if you decide to play a different class, uh, you can you can actually equip Rabi with a um, you can equip him with the chug ability if you take the tankard off of the first uh, off of your original melody, um, put it in your inventory, and then you'll be able to equip it onto Rabi because Rabi doesn't start with one. And then you can use that chug ability to gain yourself spell points. And because Rabi is a bard, you'll be able to equip Sanctuary Score. So if you need a little bit of help in the early game, do that. Um, make sure that he has a tankard. Get him some spell points. We have Ready. Melody here, so that's not an issue for us. Uh, but he has more skills that he can equip. So you can see that this gave us a... Um, a... I don't remember how much, an eight, seven or eight constitution shield or whatever it was. And so he did seven damage. Um, so we're back to full health. He didn't break the shield. We're fine. If you get two drunk stacks, which we're only at one, it will, um, it will heal you as well for five um, if the shield is broken. So that's essentially right now with the plus two bonus strength from our Einar passive, we have a total of 15. So now we can go ahead. He did the lunging thing. Uh, now he's On going to try mark. to do the other thing, but we have head knocker. Uh -huh. Ready for orders. And so we'll be able to stop it next time. So he's going to try it from way back there. Of course, we can attack him. Ready. And then we can move Shut up with Rabi. Uh, we're going to want to... I almost did the chop instead, but we're going to want to stop that. Break the focus. And then with our last spell point here, because we do want to save on the alcohol, because we don't want to be overly waste wasteful of it. We want to put it on Rabi. Good. Uh, oh, wait. Nope, that's not... That's not what to do. Because <laughs> since we broke it, he's going to try it again. So on your now he's going to do the lunging talon thing. So now I will have to use another one because I, uh, yeah, I did that wrong. But theoretically, if you don't Sanctuary score there and you wait for him to use that ability, then you can use, then you can go ahead and use it. Let me just Let's go here. I beg your pardon. Let's go here. Now we can defend and smack him all around. We could be using Kale's Rudiment here as well, but it really, it really doesn't save us much because we have to hit them anyways. There's no chance with good tactics that they can actually do damage to us as long as, as long as we have um, spell points in order to use it. So, let's grab this. We got... Uh, musical Bones, and that is going to yes. be a slight upgrade to what we had already. So we're now at 13 Constitution. And we'll find a chest just around this corner. Make sure to look around corners, guys. Uh, that is blocked off. We can't go there. We'll find the Adventurer's Guild right over here. And even though it was a longer episode, kind of just explaining the basics, the tutorials of the game... Um, we'll definitely get more in depth and faster later, but I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, we can push this away and then we'll be back to our original location over there. So we're here at the camp and the Adventures Guild is right up ahead. 
Uh, so yes, thank you all for joining us. Uh, oh, make sure to save every time you come by, come by one of these. Uh, especially if you're going to be consuming things. Uh, if you're if you're consuming things for spell point, uh, then uh, for exp experience points, I mean. Here we are. You'll want to be I careful of that. Not to let anybody in who didn't give them the wild land whistle. Also, those give you XP give as well. All right, first song of exploration. It can affect the world in many different ways. Bring up the party bar with the right click, then click abilities. Or, or next, reveal your abilities and play the song Wild Wildland Whistle. Aye. What you want? He won't let us in. Ah. <laughs> there we go. That's the tune. Welcome, friend. Hello, Robbie. Glad to see you in one piece. All right. So, yeah, a little bit of a longer one. We did character creation and we went through the starting steps. Uh, next time is going to be uh, this next quest over here. Make a little speech. I'm going to pause him before he uh, be actually be before we actually get into the quest part. But All we'll friends, at least finish this, this quest here. Me your ears a moment. Well, friends, seems the Fatherites have decided to wipe us adventurers out once and for all. Not sure if they really think we're behind all the murder and mayhem that's been plaguing Scarabray, or if they just want a scapegoat. But either way, if we ever want to live in peace again, we have to prove to those bastard sword priests that we're not the enemy. And the best way to do that is to bring them the enemy. Now, I'm sending messengers to the elves and dwarves to petition their help in this. That help, however, may be long in coming. So we need a few brave souls here and now willing to hunt down whoever's behind this terror and deliver them to the priests. Not just to save Scarabray, not just to save the Adventurer's Guild, but to save the lives of all the elves, dwarves, trow, adventurers, outcasts, and practitioners of magic in Caith. So, any volunteers? Cricket. Cricket. Well, you know where I'll be when you make up your mind. All right. So with that, two quests are complete. As you can see, uh, J for journal. You can see the map um, and quests here. So we've completed Hard Times in Scarabray. And we are just about to complete Home in the Dark. All we need to do is chat with Rabbi. Uh, so, uh, we'll put in a save here, we'll talk about that, we'll talk about that shiny thing, and we'll talk about the other things in here at the start of next episode. Thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you're liking the game so far, now that, uh, now that you might have a little bit better of understanding of it. Uh, we'll go quicker in the future, but thank you all for joining us. We shall, s I, I hope to see you next time. Thank you all, and farewell.